Learning jazz songs is incredibly important. I'm sure you've heard me and many others say that again and again, but it can also be unbelievably difficult in the beginning. I spent a long time isolated from the world, practicing for hours every day to learn the first two jazz standards. And that was largely because I'd chosen songs that were much, much too difficult for a beginner because I just didn't know any better. But it is actually hard to figure out exactly what songs will be good for you to start with. So I thought it might be useful to compare five easy songs so that you have a better way to figure out what might be useful for you to learn. And even if you already know some songs, then these suggestions are great to add to your repertoire and also kind of easy to get in there. As you will see, I actually left out some very common songs from this video, but I'll explain why that is along the way. And there's also another thing that's a little bit surprising about this list. Let's start with one of the easiest songs to solo over. Sonny Rollins, Pent Up House. If you look at the sheet music for this Sonny Rollins classic, then the theme and the chords in the theme might look incredibly complicated. But the solo form is actually very simple, and you could look at the 16 bar form and think of it as an AABA, but to me it doesn't really feel like that, probably because it's a short form. It is really just a 2-5-1 in G major played a few times, and then two other related two fives. So common progressions that you may already have practiced and otherwise you can actually start learning them on this song. It is a great way to work on some basic jazz progressions in a song and I've seen a lot of students get more confident improvising over changes by learning this song. What is great about the theme being a little bit more complicated is that that will also teach you some jazz melody and jazz rhythms which is very useful for your phrasing and vocabulary. To compare the songs, then I made this chart to have an overview of them, and I'm going to keep it really simple with the grades, so it's either going to be good or bad, but don't overinterpret this. They're all solid material to study, and this is also a bit of an experiment for this video. For this song, then the progression is good. It's pretty simple with the number of scales and keys that you need. The melody is a little bit difficult, even if there's an advantage to that as well, and it's not really a common form that will help you learn other songs. The tempo can also sometimes be a bit high, but of course you can still play it slower. Let's see how it stacks up against the next song. This song is a great, very simple example of an AABA form, which is of course a very common form in jazz. And since it's a big band composition from the Ellington Songbook, then it's also a good melody for learning some phrasing and rhythm. If you're starting out playing jazz, then that aspect is maybe a bit overlooked since we tend to be very busy keeping track of what notes to play and what's going on with the chords. But actually learning melodies like this is very useful for your soloing as well, since you will learn to hear melodies with interesting rhythms and also how to play simpler phrases and melodies with strong rhythm. The advantage to AABA forms is that you really only need to learn 16 bars to know the whole song, an eight bar A part and an eight bar B part. In that respect, the amount of chords in this song is not higher than pent up house. The bridge, it's a rhythm bridge, essentially just a dominant chain ending on the dominant of the key. Now, this is also a very common bridge and will help you learn, among other things, rhythm changes, which of course is stuff you need for a lot of other songs. So in that way, this is also a very practical song to work on that will help you later. Perdido scores really well. Maybe only the tempo is often a bit tricky since the theme doesn't sound that great if it's too slow. This is going to be hard to beat. The way I learned the first few standards is not how you want to go about it. And the first songs that I learned are not on this list. This was when I just started playing jazz and I didn't really know what songs to learn, but I had a real book for this one and a few jazz CDs. And one of the songs that I had heard that I really liked was Stella by Starlight, which of course is a beautiful song, but it's a horrible choice for a first song since it has an unclear form, has very complicated harmony and it uses a lot of different scales. It's pretty much everything you don't want in the first song that you're trying to learn by yourself. The other song that I ended up working on was There's No Greater Love, which is not nearly as complicated, but certainly also not easy or a great first choice. The result was that I spent weeks and weeks practicing those two songs for hours every day, just using brute force to get them into my system. And I just kept on playing them until they stuck, which is just not the way you want to do this. Now, I'm pretty sure that this list would have been super useful for me at the time. But of course, it's also just my list. It's the songs that I think about. So let me know if you have a suggestion for a good song that's not in this video. I think there's a good chance that you already know this song, that you've heard this at least, because there are quite a few great recordings of this by guitarists like Marnie Kessel, Wes Montgomery and Joe Pass. And it is one of the nicest medium swing tunes to play. It's also another Ellington song, so this time it's written by Billy Strayhorn. The song is usually played medium and the chord progressions are mostly two fives with a few of them actually resolving to the one chord. 
So it does move around quite a lot with all those two fives and it's covering quite a few keys and it's not always moving in a predictable way. The form is ABA and the bridge is again a common progression, namely what is often referred to as an Ellington bridge, which you will find in a lot of other songs like Honey Sock Rose, Just Squeeze Me or So Down So Samba. So clearly learning this song will give you an advantage with a lot of other songs. So how does it score? The chord progression is good, but there are a bit many scales involved. The melody is easy and the form is not only easy, but will also help you learn other songs. So that's really a big plus. So this is also a pretty good score. Now the next song is actually a bebop theme, but I guess you could also call Pinned Up House a bebop theme. First, I should probably talk about why I'm leaving out very common songs like Autumn Leaves, Blue Bossa and So What, since they're obviously both very common and very famous songs. Now this is actually pretty important because you want to learn songs that help you learn other songs and you want to gradually build your skills and you also don't want to get stuck just worrying about scales. Now in my experience when teaching beginning students then internalizing a lot of different scales is pretty difficult. Maybe that's actually also personal experience. So sticking to major scales can be very practical. That doesn't mean that you can't use songs in minor keys like Autumn Leaves and Blue Bossa but it does introduce some complexity to work with them because just the basic minor 251 cadence, you end up using two or three different types of scales, which is quite a lot. At the same time, another factor with this is also what songs you are already familiar with. And if you already know and have listened to Autumn Leaves, maybe you've learned the theme, then a song like that can be fine. But if you're figuring this out for yourself, I think it is worth keeping in mind how complicated the harmony is in the beginning and trying to really keep that simple. I guess I could make a follow-up video at some point, including minor songs. This may be the least famous song on the list, but this song is really great for working on your 251 progressions in different keys. It was written by John Lewis, who's probably most famous for being a part of the modern jazz quartet. The motivic melody is moving through the keys in the song, and it's usually played a lot slower than most of the other Bob themes that you will come across. So it can be a really great way to get started with that type of melody as well. Again, the form is an A-A-B-A, -A, probably because these are often simpler than a lot of the A-B-A-C songs. So if you think of a song like There'll Never Be Another You or Donna Lee, then they have more complicated harmony. But this song, pretty much all the chord progressions are two five ones, but there are quite a few scales and the theme is maybe a bit more complicated than the rest. So this is not the highest score, but keep in mind that this is still a very easy song. When I first wrote down the songs on this list, I chose them because I've used them in lessons. I never realized that they were in fact all compositions by jazz artists. And I was also surprised to see that so many of them were associated with Ellington. But in a way that kind of makes sense since it is really using jazz music to teach jazz. And I think these songs are maybe closer connected to jazz than sort of a normal standard, which was originally a show tune or a song from a movie. The last song on the list is the song that I'm also using in my roadmap course, Take the A-Train. So yet another Ellington related song, but also one that I've tested on several thousand students in the roadmap and also in real lessons. And it's a pretty solid first song. Take the A-Train is again an A-A-B-A -A form, and here the A part is a common progression that you'll find in a lot of other songs, especially a lot of bossa nova tunes like so Dance of Samba or Girl from Ipanema. The progressions in the song are basic but strong. There are not a lot of scales needed to play it and it works really well at a slower tempo as well. The only thing that's maybe a bit tricky sometimes is the melody. Of course, any of these five songs will serve you well as a first song or be easy to add to your repertoire if you're just looking to extend that. A few songs that I considered for this video but that didn't make it were Tune Up, Lady Bird and So Dance of Samba. I guess it's mostly about having the right balance between a useful melody and an easy chord progression. But I'm of course also very curious to what songs you would put in there because this is just my list. So let me know about that in the comments. Now, if you want to know what I would practice if I was starting over and what you can use to level up your playing, then check out this video. It takes a look at what skills to develop, how to practice, but I also talk about whether it became easier to learn jazz with apps and online information and I give some recommendations that definitely are easier.